Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay, tired, but yeah. enjoying the sunshine. It's kind of been a long week. It has been a really long week. Yeah. <laughs> I know you've been you've been busy for sure. Yeah. I mean, I've been busy too, but I know like you have like deadlines and stuff this week. We're trying to get through some things. So it's not till Monday, Allison. My deadline is Monday, and I do not appreciate you trying to shorten me yes. those <laughs> extra days. <sighs> <laughs> Good morning, Melanie. <laughs> oh, I can't see chat. Oh no. Now I can see who, who's popping up in the chat. That's weird. Oh no. Now I'm me? fully responsible for this. Weird. Um oh, well. I'm assuming we'll just have I don't know what the, I, I don't nothing is as long as you can see me too. That's fine. You'll just have to like let me know what people are saying. I today. will. I'll 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 do that. Nothing. We didn't do anything differently. So this is just one of those fun uh, new fun <laughs> errors. Yes. Liz, Liz can see me fine. Oh, okay. So Liz, you're, you're, I don't know why I couldn't see Melanie's comment. Oh, well, maybe Mel maybe Melanie's blocked blocked you from Facebook. And even though you're not here on Facebook, literally, <laughs> just somehow it's that powerful, and you're never gonna hear from Melanie again. Melanie hates. Me <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, we'll just call that a fluke. Well, good morning. Okay. We were not here last week. Did we do anything um, thrilling in the interim that we need to share? Um, I went on an Easter egg hunt and I didn't find any Easter eggs. Were you the only person? Like, like there were clues, scavenger oh, hunt, okay. but okay. not like they were just on the ground. Okay, I was gonna say very close when the clue was library. Like that, like the was clue wasn't library, but it was like, oh, that's a library. Yeah. So um, we got there, but the people got there faster than us. So. Oh, okay. All right. Let's have fun with the scavenger hunt, uh, an Easter scavenger hunt or whatever. That sounds fun and definitely more uh, adult themed than. Like you said, finding the eggs in the grass, which I was going to feel very sorry for you if you were participating in like a family style Easter egg hunt and you didn't find a single egg. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. But I don't have anything really either. Last Friday, um, I just, I, well, yeah, I'll, we have a, uh, my branch at Northwest, we have a story time kits. We used to call them daycare kits and we're transitioning them, but you can have, um, you can check out all these books on a topic for children. Picture books, mm -hmm. sometimes nonfiction books in there, um, sometimes like a CD with music, and then there's folders with activities in them. And we're kind of been going through like re, just not like redoing them completely, but just freshening them up, putting new books yeah. in, and then yeah. we changed the title of them. Um, and so I worked on those a lot last Friday. The time that I would have been here, I was uh, working on working on getting through some of those because it is a big project, but it looks, yeah. it, it's fun to refresh. And we were doing some new ones. We have a pirate one now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just just some some new. And since our branch manager out there, Tara, um, since she's in charge, we do also have a bird kit because she is a, a birder. Tara. We've got lots of birds at Northwest, so it does make sense. But you know, we're adding in some some new ones. So that's what I did. That's what I did in place of the show last week. <laughs> Very fun. Yeah. And so we planned today to talk about mysteries. Are we prepared for that? It's a mystery. We'll have to see. I know. <laughs> I was going to say, are we ever prepared? Um, we are. We are. Um, oh, no. I do see on my end, Leah is frozen. So let's hope that that comes back. Well, I did begin, because this is usually my role, is to do some of the research. I did start out by explaining, doing research into the difference between mysteries, thrillers, and then kind of like psychological suspense. Those are all very popular genres of reading, um, but they are technically different. Um, and so at the library, you know, we you're going to find a lot of them in the mystery section, but there are, I don't know, there are differences. So a mystery, generally speaking, you're working backwards to solve a crime. You don't know who did it. And as you're working through the story, you're trying to figure it out. Um, it's more of a puzzle in my mind, um, kind of like solving a puzzle, than an adrenaline pulse pounding 
situation. A thriller, that's where you get the adrenaline and the pulse pounding. And in a thriller, a lot of times you know who did it or you know who is going to do it, um, who will do it in the future, um, and you're trying to stop them. There's an element of danger there. Um, and there is still, though, you know, it's still to the reader, a lot of times we still view it as a mystery, though. And then finally, there's psychological suspense. And in this case, that's where you get into your unreliable narrators. That's also where you find yourself um, in the mind of the bad guy. Uh, so you might be reading chapters from the perspective of the person who did it. Um, and in psychological suspense, you're also more likely to know things that the characters in the book do not know themselves. Um, oh, well, hopefully we'll get Leah back here shortly. Um, and then there's kind of like a, not a fourth genre, but it's another term that's used, which is crime fiction. And crime fiction kind of cover, can cover a lot of those things, but it's going to be an investigation um, no matter what. And so it usually does fall into the mystery category, but that's a term that's used a lot in um, Scandinavian noir uh, and in um, really kind of like in Europe and Britain, they'll use crime fiction to refer to mysteries. So like things that might win an Agatha Christie award are also just called crime fiction. But here crime fiction indicates a little bit more of like a grittier um, and sometimes more of a thriller aspect. So those are the words that we use to describe mysteries. Um, and I think today we had brought books that probably covered each one of those categories. I have not heard from Leah, so we might hop out and try it. Oh, no, there she is. Let's try this again. All right. That was fun, I'm Leah. You I'm missed, so sorry. That's okay, but I had, I, you missed it all but I'm assuming these are things you already knew. What I went through was described the difference between a mystery, a thriller, and a psychological suspense book, and how probably what we're gonna talk about today has all of those elements in it, but when you're like being strict about what genre is a book, um, and so I went through and talked about talked about those things, which okay. I don't think I need to fill you in on. And then I also mentioned uh, the genre of crime fiction, which is more of like a European thing, and that's your Scandinavian noir, but that covers mysteries and, uh, you know, I turned blue. Apparently not for me. Wow. Um, that today. No. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully this doesn't happen happen again. Right? Yeah. I'm gonna have to see what is going on. I think I don't I don't know what it is. Well, do you wanna go on? so I like I said, I introduced that, but I know we brought books. Do you wanna start with some of the stuff that you brought? Um, well, I don't have any physical books because like all of mine are stuff that's like brand new or coming out this year fine. yeah and, um they're either if they're out there are holds lists and if some of them just aren't out yet that's fine um, i didn't bring any books either and it's not even because they're new it's just because i did uh that's how i did my research so sometimes i don't want to carry a bag of books home mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes all the bags i use to carry books home already have books in them <laughs> right um but i'm really excited about um Finley Donovan is Killing It uh, mm -hmm. by El Cosimano. I, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Um, okay. But she is a uh, newly divorced um, single mom with, I think she's, she, she writes, she's a writer, um, typically writes romances, but is talking to, she's talking to her, 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 her agent about possibly like writing a mystery, I think. But Liz, I'm gonna interrupt you here. I'm gonna interrupt you because Liz says, please read it, you'll like it, it's good. Okay, but she gets mistaken for a hitman. <laughs> it's just like, it's such a, an incredibly funny premise that it just sounds like it's gonna be hysterical. Well, Liz, Liz, Liz confirms it's good with a okay. capital I, yes. I trust awesome. Liz, I've already put myself on hold for this one. Good. I can't wait to get it because yes. The person she's supposed to kill ends up dead. Not by her, but she, you know. Yeah. So that one just sounds like it's hysterical. Yeah. So I'm looking well, forward good. to it. Good. Do another one in case you disappear. Okay. Um, ooh, ooh. Just this morning, I found out that Randall Silvis has another book coming out in August. Um, I talked about him earlier this year or last, last year. I was uh, doing some of his mysteries. 
he, oh, Melanie tells me not to talk so fast, sorry. Well, she okay. missed the title of the book. She asked you to repeat, what is the name of the first book that when you were talking about? Um, I will post, we will post these later, but the title is Finley Donovan is Killing It um, by L. Hazamano. Okay. Um, but Randall Silvis, uh, he has a book coming out in August, When All Light Fails. Um, he, uh, he's got this, uh, detective Ryan DeMarco series. Well, he starts out as a detective and then he, um, retires from the police force and he becomes like a private investigator as the series goes along. And, um, he takes a, what should be a simple fraternity, uh, case, like to find out, is this dude really this person's mm -hmm. father? but somehow it takes a dark twist. <laughs> so yeah, it ends up not being a, a simple case after all. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I, I love about his books is um, he's kind of based in the, uh, like the, the Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, tri-state area, mm -hmm. a little north of where I grew up. So he talks about okay. like Youngstown and like, cities on the way to Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and like I've been to yeah. them and you know yeah, so that's that's kind, of, I, kind of nice although he does end up traveling around like I think one of his books took place in Kentucky or yeah. um, this one is in Michigan but like yeah. where he's based is in that yeah. not far from where I grew up area. It's so always fun to uh, like recognize the landmarks and things especially because yeah. so many things take place like in big cities they'll take place in New York or Chicago or, you know, different types yeah. of like LA. And, you know, you don't, you might recognize those things from visiting or just from pop culture, but it's really fun to recognize your yeah. own landmarks to be yeah. in Columbus or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I did, I, I also, like I said, I don't have physical books, but I did, um, did dig into some things. It's not that I don't read mysteries cause I do, but I don't read them like, with the commitment that you read them. And um, I like books that, whether they're a mystery or a thriller, so like psychological suspense, I like books where there's definitely like a puzzle and something that, I like it when the author knows more than I do. I like it when I can get to the end of the book and I can go back and be like, there are all the clues and I didn't see them, but everything was right there. And so I really like books, as far as like a mystery goes, I really like mysteries like that. Um, and I don't read a ton of them, but I, I like that satisfying feeling. And I can trace that back to, I think, um, when I was a kid re reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is, of course is not like a mystery, but um, you know, there are, there's like a mystery throughout and a who did this and there's mistaken identity and there's red herrings. And I just remember getting to the end of that when I read it the first time uh, as a kid and being like, then going back through and reading it and seeing all of the clues and that kind of started that for me about what I would like about a mystery. Um, and so I don't have a ton to recommend that I've read in recent, I just, so I kind of looked at other that, you know, read some lists and some things that were coming out um, and to kind of start us in that maybe magical territory. Have you read Magic for Liars? It came out last year. Um, Sarah Gailey, I think is the author's name and it's about twin sisters. One it has is like magical and the other is not. And so there are, they, they grow up estranged. The one who's magical goes to some type of boarding school for magical folks. And, um, the one who doesn't, doesn't. And so they grow up estranged and the non-magical one is, um, like a private investigator and the, the, not the magical one teaches at that school now. And there's a murder at that school. And so the twin sister who's the investigator like goes out to try to help solve that crime. And so it looks like Melanie has read Melanie. it and it was good. Um, and so I'm that just read that one. To jump off from my my association with Harry Potter <laughs> with mysteries in my head, I thought that that one, I think I'd be willing to read that one too. I think it sounds it sounds interesting and uh clever, just a unique premise. <laughs> yeah. I like I like that idea. Yeah. I I have to say if my sister had magic and I didn't, I would be so jealous. Like yes, that, and I that, think would be, she that that would be really hard to take. Right. It doesn't yeah, seem fair. Really and definitely, 
they're in this book they're twins too so that seems like especially unfair like right. yeah why you well melanie mm -hmm. says it was very good so i think we should both read it yes both read it now um, it can be like latte's book club i know we mentioned that more than once because but the reality of any of us being able to commit to reading one more book you know, I know. um but and actually well, I'm thinking of a, an unusual premise that just i wrote this one down i don't know when it came out i was like looking at a, a list of like unusual mysteries or something this is called anonymous rex and i'm just going to read the summary that i pulled from it it says in a world where dinosaurs walk among us in disguise vincent rubio is a private investigator and an undercover velociraptor his uh <laughs> Partner dies under mysterious circumstances, and Vincent must bring his murderer to justice while attempting to deal with his complicated love life. So I don't know. It's called Anonymous Rex. I don't know. I didn't go far enough to see like when it if we have if we have a copy or anything like that. I it's not a new book, but um it just it popped up on this list of like unusual mysteries, and I was like, okay, I'll mention that. <laughs> that <laughs> that is awesome. I think I'm gonna have to read that one. Anonymous Rex. That is just a crazy premise. Like, how are you an undercover velociraptor? Undercover velociraptor? I don't know. I don't know. I got to find out more about it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is. <sighs> right. Private investigator and an undercover dinosaur. You find all these like fun ones. I find all these like gruesome ones. That's what you like to read, though. You're drawn it to it. It is. It's very much what I like to read. Um, I'm looking forward to. Hairpin Bridge by Taylor Adams. Um, a girl is investigating her sister's apparent suicide. Like she just can't, she can't bring herself to believe like she her sister committed suicide. Mm -hmm. um, especially since the police officer who discovered her body, she also had also pulled her over like earlier in the night mm -hmm. and she got a, she tried to, call for help lots of times on her phone but she was in a dead zone okay and the the last message on her phone to her sister is please forgive me i couldn't live with it hopefully you can officer racevic which is the officer's mm -hmm. name was so like what really happened at that bridge right so that one looks really good yes, that it, sounds like suspenseful taut yes. and uh Suspenseful. It reminds the plot of that when you mentioned um, like the possibility of suicide. There's a book um, called The Elizas. I think this is from 2019, and it's by Sarah, Sarah Shepard, who wrote Pretty Little Liars. Okay. For anyone here who's who also watched that show, um, and but it reminds me of that a little bit because the main character Eliza, um, she basically they think that she, they people think she tried to kill herself but she doesn't think that she did, but she doesn't remember what happened. Yeah. Um, she thinks that she, someone was actually hurting her, and, but she has this, she has memory loss because you know, that always makes the story more intriguing. Yeah. And um, the the thing here is that she's written it, she's written a novel, she's a, like a debut novelist and her real life as she's remembering it is starting to like blur with the novel that she wrote. And she's asking people questions about things and trying to figure out who may have been after her and the responses she's getting are beginning to mirror her novel in a way that she doesn't think that they should. So is her novel more real life than her own? I don't know. I don't know what, I'm not sure what it is, but it is an adult book, but like I said, by Sarah Shepard. So I think it's probably a crossover um, appeal with you know, like young adult type of readers too, because yeah. it's a pretty little. Yeah, that, that, that twisty, turny, unreliable narrator aspect. Yeah. Of it. And it's not like unreliable because you, you can't trust them, it's just that they can't mm -hmm. trust themselves. They, they right. don't know. There's a, I always like an unreliable narrator. <laughs> and I know, and some people don't. And I think that that's par partly some of those divisions too. And what you, what you want from your mystery, do you want, just the unreliable narrator, I think some people become frustrated because they're like, I want to see what's actually happening. And I don't want it filtered through, you know, this person who has a bad memory or a person who has an, an alcohol problem or something who can't seem to get reality straight. Um, Cause I just, I've been, I'm in book clubs sometimes where people like, they don't, they don't want that. Um, but other people definitely do. I, I enjoy 
the not knowing like what mm -hmm. I can trust from them, like yeah. because it makes you question everything, even what you think you know. Yes, that's um, true. I don't know. It makes it that much more uh, just, yeah, complicated and uncertain. And hopefully the reveal, it makes the reveal that much more like exciting because you don't know what can happen. If it's all just in the bounds of like the logic that's on the page, then you, you know, you don't, you might be able to figure it out, but you probably won't if you can't trust everyone in the book. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just looking at my. Yeah, pick pick your next one, Melanie. In the meantime, Melanie says she needs to find a way to earn a living wage by reading books, petting cats, and drinking tea. Um, but it's like replace cats with maybe dogs and tea with coffee. <laughs> but yes, um, I, I've got another one. Um, a dark and secret place by Jen Williams. Okay, it's um you know, the, the, the daughter returns home after her mother's suicide. I don't know why suicide, it's, it's, it's a useful uh, writing tool, I guess, but I hope it never happens in real life. But, right. um, but she finds in her mother's stuff, like stacks and stacks of letters between her mother and this convicted um, serial killer that and um suddenly people are starting to die in ways that are very similar to the way the serial killer murdered people so there's like mm -hmm. is he really the, the killer what does her mom know about these cases and it's like how much do you really know about yeah. your loved ones right and, sure I, yeah. that, that's, a, that's pretty much it <laughs> yeah but, but it sounds like fascinating and she she she's just a person and she teams up with a detective and they yes all of the mystery i'm sure right well one would hope it's very I'm sure her mother had nothing to do with it i'm sure <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um let's see uh parents i'll bring up this one um because this is by Kazuro Ishiguro, the guy who did Claire and the Sun, who we've mentioned several times and I've recently returned without reading. Um, this book is called When We Were Orphans and the main character is a detective whose parents vanish under strange circumstances. Um, and the novel goes back and forth in time from his boyhood in Japan to him being an adult investigator with, you know, trying to figure out what happened to his parents. That's the most that I know about that one, but I definitely like picked that one out because we've mentioned him several times now. Um, yeah. I, and that is a mystery. I'm about between a half and a third way through Clara and the okay. Sun, and you're not down and read two other books in the meantime. I just, yeah, it's it's not. I I want to like it. I you know I love. I'm very intrigued by the premise. I want mm -hmm. to like it. I'm just not. So I don't know if I'll finish it. That's okay. Well, when you return it, maybe it'll trigger my hold and I'll get it again and we'll see. <laughs> That's the thing. I do return the things, but then I put a hold on it again. If I really did, I really was interested. And then yeah. it'll move down and down a list until suddenly it becomes on my list of like, well, I'll look for that when I'm like at a used bookstore or I'll look for that like in this bargain bin. Um, right, yeah. <laughs> like, especially if it was a really, really popular book that I know so many people bought and read mm -hmm. and then it's gonna be used a lot of places. Mm -hmm. That ended up being how I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue because like it was everywhere and so many people bought it. I may be able to get a used copy, you know, in not too long. <laughs> like I read that book and I'm like, I want to buy a copy for me mm -hmm. to have. So because there are so many passages in that book that I want to go through and I would like want to be able to underline. Mm -hmm. And like some of the language in that book is just beautiful, amazing. You're going to want a copy of your own mm -hmm. and like spend time with and yeah. like, the language is just amazing it's beautiful yeah. um melanie says sometimes you, melanie says that sometimes you just aren't ready for a book so maybe like the claire and the sun book right now just is not like the mindset for you yeah yeah um yeah what's your next one i think it's your turn um well dark and twisty you know i like dark and twisty this mm -hmm. one is called what waits for you by Joseph Schneider. It's about a serial killer who breaks into people's houses and he's like there for hours, sometimes days before. Stop you there. 
I'm going to stop you there. It's the show and that's fine. You're going to need to go ahead and finish, but I'm going to try to tune you out because that's too creepy and I don't want to hear about it. But yeah, I just think that is so scary. Like no. home break-ins are like one of my like big fears, especially mm -hmm. because, you know, for so many years I lived alone mm -hmm. that it was just like, you're asleep and that's very vulnerable. And it's just like, so that's one of your big fears, but it's also one of those things that I'm just like, have to watch or you know <laughs> no it is not it is one of those things you have to avoid and there's no reason to read a book like that there's no reason to watch a show like that just i don't need it in my brain i don't need to consider those things in I'm my sorry. opinion very sorry but, but that's, that does, that's, uh, that's what i want to what that does sound super creepy to have the, the, the person just like is in there because i've read also books or like read premises or whatever where like the person will like come in the house over and over again, like before. Yeah. Yeah. Can I change the subject? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, this one is from several years ago. Um, but oh, and I can't read my own handwriting, so I don't know the guy's last name, but it's called meddling kids. The guy's first name is Edgar. I can't read my handwriting. It begins with a C is his last name. And it's about, um, it's about, about, about Scooby-Doo and the gang. Well, it's meddling about a group kids. of, it's about a group of kids in well they were kids in the 70s and they solved these mysteries they were like the kids from scooby-doo but you know real life it's, and then in the 90s uh it takes you know, it takes place in the 90s after they've grown up and they're kind of you know they've gone their own ways they've grown apart but they reflect back on like their last case in the 70s and um about this haunted house they were in and it's just something was not quite as it seemed with that, something left unresolved from that. And so they've all grown grown apart, but they are reflecting back on it and they kind of get the gang back together to figure out what really happened in that haunted house. And there's even, one of the people even has like the great, great, great grandson or whatever of the dog that they had at the time. There's a Scooby style dog. And so it's one of those kind of like nostalgia trip um, books. And it has some, I think, throw, I mean, it has like probably lots of pop culture references, but it also has some Lovecraft associations um, and it's also in my mind a little bit like it in the sense that like something happens to these people when they're kids and then now they're adults and they have to, and I think one of them, according to the description, one of them has even since passed away, but one of the people in the group still has, still has a connection with him because there's like an occult situation there. He's still like present in some way. Um, and so I think that this one kind of veers into supernatural and maybe even like horror, but I wouldn't say like scary horror. Um, but it, was, it veers into that supernatural vein, but just because it was called meddling kids and they're always unmasking, um, they unmasked it. I think they describe in the, in like the plot summary in the back, um, you know, they were literally unmasking some people at like the gold mine and, you know, it just. Very, very Scooby-Doo-esque. Yeah. Very Scooby-Doo. And that's in it. The description says that um, it subverts teen detective archetypes and is a celebration of horror, love, friendship, and many tentacled interdimensional I don't know what that last word is, but we're going to say like monsters or something like that. Um, so I think it does go into that supernatural realm, but it, it seems I've always wanted to read it. It's always been on my list. I'm going to have to read that. So you've come up with some really good ones. I'm like, I need to add that to my list. <laughs> well, and like I said, though, I got to reach differently because I just cannot even with the things that you're describing. So I don't have, I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> it's really funny because I also love the fluffy romances, the light and, and the dark <laughs> gruesome. Yes. yes. And Judith mentioned um, Jasper Fjord in our comments who wrote things like the air affair, the big over easy where fairy tale characters are trying to solve crimes. And this one that she mentions trying to find out who killed Humpty Dumpty. And that that is also a good <laughs> mystery for someone who doesn't, is not into the, and it's not a cozy either because I also am not really into cozy. We talked about those a couple weeks ago. They're super fun, but that's not really my cup of tea either. Um, so something like uh, the Big Over Easy or the Air Affair is a little bit more of a intellectual turn or something. Um, just pulls from a different world than the cozy world, but. Okay. I haven't read any of 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 his books, but I love yeah. I always love the titles. So yes, yes, I know they're fun. They're fun, and it is a like a if I, Judith can add more if I'm not right about this, but um, I think it is like a detective. It is you know there's a, a recurring characters and they're solving okay. you know these fairy tale crimes, um, which is pretty fun. Um, 
one of the, the books that I have on my list is Who is Maud Dixon by Alexander. We talked about that one on the show back in January. I've oh, read it. It's good. Yeah. Is it good? Yes. So, it yeah, is good. I, we can talk about it. Of, uh, is she or is she stealing the identity? And like, you don't know. So it's. Yes. There's mistaken identity in that. And you know, the idea of stolen identity. And that's another one that takes place like in the literary world. So that's kind of fun. And they travel, I want to say to Morocco. So there's like a little yeah. bit of, you know, that, you know, just like a new landscape and stuff. Um, but that was a twisty turning one that I did enjoy. That, that one sounds, I, I like the idea of that one. It just, mm -hmm. I don't know. I like that. It sounded yeah. really good. Yeah, it was it was fun. Um, and I actually wrote that down. I have it here. It's right. Uh oh, I froze again. Um, you okay? One of us froze. I figured it was me. Okay. You, you, had, you had an alarmed look on your face for a second, and that might have been you reacting to. Oh no, I'm frozen again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had one more that I knew I wanted to mention. Um, I don't know, but I can't find it here. All right, you do another one, sorry. Um, you had mentioned a book being It-like. Yeah. Um, this also has echoes of Stephen King's It, It, but it's a book by Stephen King. It's called okay. Later. Um, all right. Um, about a, a, um, the single mother and her juvenile son who's not ordinary he's got some kind of like special abilities um and he teams up with a detective to help solve a crime because it seems like the murderer even though he's dead might be coming back from the beyond to finish what he started i i, I haven't i haven't read it obviously no. <laughs> that is a horrible description no, but whenever um, there's like uh, that supernatural part there was one that i had looked at that i didn't even write it down because i was like there might be a ghost there might not be a ghost the ghost might be the one doing the thing the ghost might be helping them figure it out it was just too much this this one like the one review i read was like some kind of um supernatural phenomenon they didn't quite mm -hmm. know what it was because they hadn't read it either but they yes. knew from other descriptions so it was just like something from beyond the grave <laughs> so we have a comment from patricia who says the mrs jeffries series is a good cozy i'm not sure i'm familiar with that um if you want to share in the comments what is uh the 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 series name or the the theme the is it a, a type of cozy yeah, yeah. um because I wanted to say you have like a theme, like knitting or cooking or food. <laughs> yes, yeah, and that sometimes triggers for me. That triggers my memory sometimes more than mm -hmm. something more specific about the book. That <laughs> yeah, um, I remembered the thing I was going to mention, which is um, I'm talking about unreliable narrators and just different types of suspense. Um, a book that I read that I did not like that everybody that was like promoted pretty heavily and. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of people probably did like it, but I found it to be disappointing was The Wife Upstairs. Normally we talk about okay. books that we like on here, but just, I had read that one and it's The Air Affairs, what reminded me, um, because it's based on, um, inspired by Jane Eyre. And um, so you already know going into it then, you're gonna have an idea of what this story arc is gonna be if you have read Jane Eyre. Yeah. Um, so reading it, I was expecting then to super lean into like this gothic type of so to have it be really atmospheric because the plot yeah and it's also called the wife upstairs exactly you kind of like so, telling people what to expect with that there may be a wife upstairs um and so i was expecting it to be really atmospheric and it's set in the south of the united states it's set in the mm -hmm. south and so i thought like almost like a southern gothic it would right. be like a great opportunity for that and it just didn't it fell flat for me in that way and again you you have a good idea of what's going to happen. So if that isn't going to be your big moment, your big shocking moment, I feel like you needed to have something else in there. And I was just disappointed because I am a fan of that type of book. Yeah. I'm a fan of books inspired by things and I'm a fan of Jane Eyre. And I just was, I was disappointed by that one, but I wouldn't encourage someone to not read it. Just going into it, knowing what to expect might've helped me. Yeah. I tend to avoid books 
based mm -hmm. on other books that I like, you know, mm -hmm. you know, like, because yeah. I always feel, well, because I loved Jane Eyre. And right after that, I read Wide Sargasso Sea. Mm -hmm. And it was like, how dare they try to ruin that character for me? Like, you, mm -hmm. you got this completely different yeah. side of yeah. the, the one character. It was just like, well, now he's a jerk. I don't, you know, so <laughs> yeah. I, I tend to avoid books based on books that I like. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I, I don't want them to ruin it for me. Yeah, I under, I understand that. I did like White Sargasso Sea. And uh, I mean, I liked what illuminated about Bertha. Like, you know, for me, that's who the story was about. And so, yeah. you know, and also you have a lot of questions in Jane Eyre. I mean, you can't read Jane Eyre and not be like, what was life like for this poor woman? Right. Um, yeah. But, but uh, I did enjoy that. But I also understand, I'm usually good at just like close, if I don't like it, just closing the door on it and being like, well, that wasn't my my favorite, but. Um, it's one of those that I had to read for a class, so. Yeah, yes. I think I may have had to read that for a class as well. Probably my British literature class in college, but. Um, so the, the, the Jack, I'm sorry. The Mrs. Jeffrey series is about a detective, but his staff secretly helps him solve his mysteries. That's a fun premise. Like he's a little incompetent, but doesn't realize it. Kind of like <laughs> da, 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 Inspector Gadget, where Penny and, <laughs> and the dog are actually yes. solving the crimes, but. Inspector Gadget gets all the credit for it. <laughs> right. And don't you love how I couldn't come up with his name? I had to sing the song. Do, 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 you do, got do, there. Inspector Gadget. Yes. But how you're gonna that's how you're gonna get there. You're never gonna mistake it once you hear the theme song. <laughs> I haven't thought about Inspector Gadget. Work sometimes just it, yeah. Well, I haven't thought about him in a very long while. So thank you for reminding me that Inspector Gadget existed. I loved Inspector Gadget. I used to watch it like every morning before I caught the school bus. Like I knew when it was over, I had to leave. So yeah. <laughs> well, we have we are at time. I mean, and we've oh, okay. And Inspector, and Inspector Gadget does fit though, because it is mystery, right? Yes, well, yeah. Except Penny was always the one solving them. <laughs> is there anything else you wanted? Any other book that you had that you definitely wanted to talk about? No. Yeah, I only had one other one on my my list, and it was a Harlan Coben, which his are his yeah. are really good. Um, but everyone knows who he is. We'll see well, it. <laughs> um, and interesting, just since you mentioned Harlan Coben, and since this actually kind of fits in with with what we know about your reading habits, um, I, I I follow different people online. We all do on you know mm -hmm. Instagram or Twitter, wherever you. Two people I didn't realize wouldn't have pictured our friends are Harlan Coben and Emily Giffen, who writes romances um, like contemporary romance, something borrowed. Yeah. Um, she has a lot of books and just she'll she'll share like text threads and he'll like read her books when they come out you know like as author friend stuff or whatever i'm pretty sure i, I i'm pretty sure like at least that's who i'm relating in my mind and um i didn't fact check i know we're going to talk about this but um they they're friends and it's just that's not but yeah, i feel like you wouldn't guess those two yeah no but i feel like you'd be friends with them because you like both of their i do both <laughs> of genres right Keep me in the, in the text circle right <laughs> throw, throw you in there well, we will be back next week. Next week is, we'll be back on our schedule again, so. And who knows what we'll be talking about? Not us. <laughs> we'll start on Thursday. Well, we'll then. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.